like, could we get him 99 on the screen? Or if you have your hymnals, please turn to page number 99. He's able to deliver the. This the grandest theme through the ages wrong. Tis the grandest theme for a mortal tongue. Tis the grandest theme that the world or son or God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able delivering God tonight. Hallelujah. 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 He's able to deliver me. And what's the name of our God tonight? Let's shout his name after two. One, two. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. He is the mighty deliverer and he's our God. Thank you, Lord. And at this time, we are going to be praying. Amen. And in this session of prayer, I don't want us to like just kneel or come to the altar. We just sang that he's able to deliver. And without a doubt that we have situations in our lives that we need the Lord to deliver us from. And we can even 
think back, pull out a file from the filing cabinet about something that he has already delivered us from. Amen. And with that confidence and reassurance, we are going to be walking around this place tonight and we are going to be praying victorious for our prayers of praise. Amen. So let us just start doing that for the next few minutes. You know what you need the Lord to deliver you from. So let us just give him a prayer of praise. Yeah, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us just thank him right now. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. We thank you, Jesus, for already answering. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. We thank you, God, for your mighty power. We thank you, Jesus, for your excellent greatness. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Let us just clap our hands unto the Lord as we return to our seats this evening. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to invite us just to turn our Bibles to Daniel chapter 3. And we'll be reading the entire chapter. Minister Moses will come and lead us. Bless the Lord, everybody. Oh, he's able to deliver. Daniel chapter 3, and we will read alternately. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise his name. And verse 1 reads, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three square cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits, he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon.
right? So the who of who in Babylon was there. Praise God. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image of that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. That at what time he hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kind of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Now, if he be ready, that at what time he hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, he fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if he worship not, he shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace. Notice now, one seven times more than it want to be heated. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace.
And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Oh, where was the fourth man? The king saw four men in there, right? Where was the fourth one? And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors begin gathered together, saw these men upon whose body the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed out on them. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Let me read that again. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their homes shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Right, 30 and last. One, two. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Here ended the reading of God's word. No other God can deliver like our God. No other God. No other God. Praise God. And you notice, we often hear a person say that the furnace was heated seven times hotter. But I did stress. He said one seven times. So the Bible says, one seven times hotter. Praise God, praise God. And after the fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were promoted. So in the midst of our fiery furnace, a promotion is on the way. Let's lift our hands and praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's just clap our hands unto the mighty deliverer. Thank you, Jesus. And before we take our seats, let us just sing this little chorus. Jesus is my deliverer. After two, one, two. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my deliverer. I know he delivers me. How do you know he delivers? How do you know he delivers? How do you know he delivers? Jesus is my 
And at this time, I just really want to extend a warm welcome to each and every one that's in the house tonight. Amen. We're so happy that you have joined us for worship, and we just want to give the Lord thanks. Amen. And for those persons joining us via live stream, we just want to extend a warm welcome to you as well. And we pray that Jesus, who is able to deliver, will meet you where you are tonight and during the course of the week and anytime you need him. Praise God. These are the announcements. On Tuesday, well, beginning tomorrow, we have a prayer week starting from the 5th through to the 10th, and that's in relation to our upcoming 72nd National Conference. And the theme is United for the Cause of Christ. Amen. So we just want to encourage persons to just support in prayer because we know that what prayer does change things. Amen. Praise God. On Tuesday at 12 to 2 p.m., we'll be having our Golden Ages prayer time in the sanctuary. On Wednesday, we have Morning Mana beginning at 6.30 a.m. And the theme is The Way. Persons who are able to come, we want you to come out and join that session. At 11.45 a.m., we'll be having prayer time in the sanctuary, which is the fasting service. At 6 p.m., we'll be having prayer and Bible study, the concurrent sessions that have been going on for the last three weeks, and the saints meeting, which was announced for this, sorry, this Wednesday, the 7th, has been postponed. A date will be advised later. On Saturday, we will be having an altar workers seminar, and that will take place at Bethel Tabernacle in Ocherios. Persons who are interested in attending, please give your names to Minister Moses or Sister Davin, so that arrangements may be made for you to go. I guess as it really relates to transportation. On Sunday, we'll be having Rightly Dividing the Word on RGR Fame FM. At 7.30 a.m., we have prayer time right here in the sanctuary. 8 a.m., we have pre-session. And 8.30, we have? We have at 8.30? Amen. And... We are looking forward to that. Praise God. At 10 a.m., we'll be having our morning worship service and children's church. And at 6 p.m., we'll be having our evening service. And we just want to plug this in that last week, we have two of our children. One was baptized in Jesus' name and one received the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we are excited about that. And today, a lady was filled with the Holy Ghost and she requested baptism also. So we just want to give the Lord thanks for that. Amen. And just to remind you also that the prayer box is right there. So if you have any prayer requests, you can just drop it in that box right there. Amen. I'm going to invite the ushers to come. And as they come, we just want to remind you also that persons who are interested in attending the conference, please indicate by writing your names on the list at the table, right in the foyer. And also, National Choir Practices 
will take place on February Saturday 10th, that's next Saturday, also at Bethel Tabernacle. Praise God. And there is an emergency church board meeting on Monday, February 5th, which is tomorrow. That begins at 6 p.m. and it is in the conference room. Persons, members of the board, please make an effort to attend that meeting. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are indeed great and greatly to be praised. Not just that, God, we know that you are indeed able to deliver us. It doesn't matter what our situations are, you are indeed able to deliver, to conquer, to make ways where there seem to be no way. And we pause just to say thanks. And Lord, in this time, we know that we need you more than ever, and we turn our eyes to you. We're about to worship you in giving, and I pray, Lord, that you will bless each and every hand that will stretch forth to give. I pray to God that those who have a desire to give but are unable to that, Lord Jesus, you will just minister to them in a very special way, and that as the basket goes by, that they will even just give a praise. Lord, I ask you, Lord, that whatever is collected, that you will multiply and that it will be used according to your divine purpose. Lord, we just want to give you thanks once again and we bless your name and claim it done in Jesus' name. Amen. As the ushers receive the orphan, the praise team will lead us in worship. You deserve the glory. And the honor, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor, Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we praise your holy name.
you may feel down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances that you can get through and right now it seems that there's no you're going under God's proven time and time again he'll take care of you and he'll do it again he'll do it again That you're going through and how you are hurting. Oh, we understand just how your heart has been broken in two. Oh, but he's the God of the sun and the stars and the seas. He is your father. He'll fix it for you, and he'll do it again. I know he'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you've been. As a team. You may not know 
He's going to do it again. I'm inviting us all to just stand. Hallelujah. Just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We may not know how. We may not know when, but what? He will do it again. Hallelujah. Just think about something that the Lord has already done and think about what you need him to do. And we're just saying to you, you may not know how, you may not know when, but he will do it again. Praise God. And I'm going to invite Sister Paulette Codner to come now. And we're talking about Jesus being able to deliver us. Amen. And she's going to be sharing her testimony. And we're just going to ask you just to listen. And I pray that the Lord will just bless us and encourage us as she comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise him. I'm running from this testimony for so long, from Brother Moses. And he decided that I have to do it tonight. And I don't know, but I'm just feeling so sick in my stomach, you know. I don't know if he's nervous, and I'm telling him up there and him saying. So, just bear with me. My testimony tonight is about my son, Giovanni. But before I go into my testimony, I just want to encourage somebody. I don't know, this testimony can encourage a mother, but I'm going to give you my pattern or my the theory in which I started out. When I was growing up, I always hear the adults say, you have to seek a friend before you need one. I never understand what they mean. But I ask questions, and they normally say to you, you know, you have to have somebody where it's not only when it's trouble or something, you find that person. You have to have that person where you can interact with, you have as a friend or a confidant or somebody, you know? So um, when I decided to really and truly, person would say, you know, you play church. And I used to think I used to play a lot of church. Growing up in the church, you know, you just go with the routine. And you go to pray, and you tell daddy, good morning. And in the night, you say, good night. You know? But after a while, my life take a turn. I didn't want to live that way anymore. I decided that I'm going to truly surrender to God. So I remember I give you my testimony about my boys. And I call them and I talk with them. They grew up in the church here. Both of them baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And they got big and they go. I remember when I spoke with the little one, Giovanni. He said to me, when I was talking to him, he said, Mommy, I'm young. And you know you have to experience little thing. So my prayer life changed. And I start to pray like Joe. Peradventure, they sin out there, God. Every night I would pray and ask God to forgive him, to wash him, to cleanse him, and to let him find his way home back to you. And I would pray that prayer. And after a while, my prayer get deeper and deeper. And you know certain songs that you never used to sing? They become my prayer now. Because I know 
for me really and truly to line up with God and with the word. Singing songs like, I'll trade sunshine for rain, comfort for pain. That's what I'll be willing to do. I used to shut my mouth when I used to hear those songs sound. But after a while, they become a part of me. Because now I know if I'm really going to reign with God, I'm going to have to suffer with him. Walking with that cross up Golgotha's hill, it wasn't just for me to mere go by and just to live any and any hour and then to say, morning and thank you, Jesus. I know now that my life has to line up. So I know that whatever it takes to be like you, Jesus, that's what I'll be willing to do. So I know if Jesus is going to take away the sunshine and give me some rain, once he is there, I know I'll be all right. I know once Jesus is on my boat, I know that I can rest assured that it, that boat is not going to sink. And I start to think when I remember he said to Saul that the ship going to Tarsus, it's going to mash up and everything, but not one soul will be lost. So I start to rest on the word of God. And I start to live in the word. And it goes on like that. And I start to pray for my boys. And I start to pray some early morning, wee hours of the morning, I would get up. And I tell daddy, Jesus, I'm not going to let go of this arm. And I don't know if I'm going to weary you, Jesus. But every morning, I'm going to be like Rispa. Because I'm going to pray with Giovanni and beyond. And I'm going to put me on and cheer for me before you. And I'm going to fan off every John Crow. And every fly and every beast that is coming. None of them is going to eat their carcass. Because his mother is going to pray. And I'm going to build up those prayers. And I start to pray. And I change my prayer pattern. And we hours in the morning, 4 a.m., I would get up and I would travel for being on Giovanni. And I would go on and on. On the 15th of July, got up every morning, every Sunday morning, I got up. And I would listen to rightly divide the word. And I got up that morning. And just as I woke up and got up to listen to rightly divided the word, my phone rang. And when I answered the phone, it was my daughter-in-law on the other end. And she said, Mom, and from she said, Mom, I don't know, but everything just sank in me. And I can tell you, saints of God, I remember finishing the conversation in the bathroom. I don't know what happened, but I just sat there. I, I had to reach a bathroom. And I woke, and I was just there, all in turmoil. She said, Giovanni is in the hospital, and it don't look good, mommy. I said, what? She said, it don't look good. She don't know if Giovanni is alive or if Giovanni is dead. And I just stood there and I listened. And the tears just going and it's just going. I don't know if I put down the phone with her. I don't know what I do. But I know I wasn't talking to her anymore. And I was just walking to and fro. And I was just crying. And I was just crying. Times like those, you can't even say, Jesus, touch Giovanni or whatever. You just, your mind just into another state. And I mean, the, I just going and going. But when I remember I reached into the living room back and I stand up. 
That's when I kind of get to put myself. And I said, Daddy. Daddy. I did not only love you because you love me. I fell in love with you. And you see all those early morning prayer. And you see all those midnight prayer that I give to you for Giovanni. I'm asking you right now. Because I don't know if I can find anymore. But you have them buckle up up there. And I'm asking you, Daddy Jesus, to pour them out upon Giovanni. Pour it out upon Giovanni, Jesus. And then I start to pray, worship him. And I just start to cry. And I just start to worship. Further on in the day, I got another call. It was from Michael. He didn't call me because he didn't want to tell me anything. I don't know what to say. So he called me when the doctor was out of the theater with Giovanni. And he had me on the speaker so I could talk to the doctor too. And I hear when the doctor say, It's not looking good. He's giving him some blood, some plasma. But it's not working with him. And he has lost a lot of blood. And I said, oh, you mean a lot of blood? The doctor say, I think he said, your body consists of eight pints of blood. And Giovanni lost over seven pints of blood. So... I say to him, why don't you give him some blood? His father is there. I can come and give some blood. And I was there. The doctor said, no. He's in a critical condition, right? in a position right now. To do that, they have to go through some process. So they just have to use what they're using. And after I finished talking to them, I start to wail again. And I said, Daddy, Jesus, you went to the cross. And you said, by your stripes, we are healed. Father God, you do it before. And I remember Sister Jackie's testimony. And I say, you confuse Jackie with blood. Giovanni is your child too. So you're going to infuse him with some blood, Daddy Jesus. You're going to confuse him with some blood. I remember I went inside and I lay down on the bed. And I lay there for a while. And I don't know if everything just come on me. I mean everything just down. I don't know if it's pressure. I don't know what. But I remember I got up. I haven't eaten anything, and my stomach was taking a toll for me words. And I go into the kitchen, and God tried to get up, and my head feel like about three blocks was in my head. I could hardly get my head off the pillow. And I fight myself, and I held on, and I got up. And I walked to those walls, and I walked straight to the kitchen. I couldn't even strike the match there was no strength in my body the morning they came for me to go to the doctor and when I reached there in the doctor I don't have the pressure was so high and I don't have pressure it was so high and I know that God was there looking out for me and I remember when the doctor said, I'm going to sit in the room. She's going to give me something to put under my tongue to keep down the pressure or something. Then the Lord said that I didn't need anything. My phone rang. And when I answer my phone, I hear, Mommy. I was sitting in the hospital and I said, I don't know how the people them managing. I said, Chia! 
cheer for me. He said, yes, mommy. I said, cheer you that. He said, yes, mommy. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. When the doctor came out, when the doctor came out, I take me back in the room to check my pressure. The doctor said, you don't have no pressure. Your pressure is like baby. Come in the room. Let me see what's going on with you. There was nothing that wrong with me. The Lord see that I didn't need anything, any tablet. So the Lord just called me. Is my call just make cheer and he give me that call right at that time. And I tell you, I leave that hospital, I leave that doctor office rejoicing, thanking God and everything. On the 19th, I left Jamaica and I went up there. My daughter-in-law picked me up at the airport and she took me straight to the hospital. And when I went there, I was supposed to take my laptop for them to put it up for you to see. Him. I always stay in the hospital. And when I went there, I saw his father on the outside and he was crying. And I just dropped my bag there and I just stuck my pocketbook right there and I just stand at the door he was in that critical room where they have all sort of thing on him. And Michael say, he's looking good now. Because the oath that was in his mouth is out. But just what was in his nostril and the thing them that all over on him and the machine them was just going. And I stand there. And I just start to cry and I just start to pray. I said, Daddy Jesus, give him to me. I don't know for how long, but Father God, I don't think I'm ready to let go. I'm asking you, Jesus, just to save him. Save my baby boy. Heal my baby boy. And I mean, the night I go there and I hold him and I pray. And every morning I would go to the hospital. I would pray. And every night I would pray. And I mean, Giovanni just started looking good. And he just started to puzzle the doctor, Sam. Oh, him just coming on so good. And he's coming on good. And every time that they come, they, 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 he got two shots. Sorry, I didn't tell you what happened. He went to an all-white party. And it seemed as if some altercation was on the outside with some girls, they say. And they, some one of the girl boyfriends, I seem as if. Fire some shots. Three shots. And those on the inside got the shot. Giovanni got two. And another guy got one. One went through his arm, his hand, and he break up all the bones then, but it didn't splint. It just splintered the bones then. But they were still in place. It went through. The other shot went through his torso. Burst his liver. It ricocheted, the doctor said, through the body. Damaged the kidney. And it burst the main heart, blood arteries. That was why he bled that much. And the doctor said he was drinking some alcoholic things. So that made the blood run even faster. So that was what happened to him. So they had to go in. They burst, they give him a cut from right up here, straight down, he has the cut. So he was in the hospital there, and he's coming on, he's coming on. They had something up here in his neck that they used to give him the dialysis and thing. And I remember after some days, the doctor came. When I went there the morning, he wasn't in his bed. When I asked the nurse, where is he? She said, they take him to put in the permanent thing for his dialysis in his somewhere up here. And I stand there when he came back and I say to the doctor, why you put that in him? 
the doctor said the one up here has to come out and this one have to stay there now permanent. I said, no, I'm not going to accept that. He said, why? I said, no, he's not going to go through that. You have to take it out back. He said, no, I said, you have to take it out back. I don't know what you're going to do, but you have to take it out. And I remember he went and he did his dialysis the Wednesday. He went and he did it the Friday. And he went back the Saturday. And Monday morning, they didn't come for him. The Wednesday, they didn't come for him. And the Friday morning, the doctor came back and said, we're taking him to the theater. I said, what are you going to do? He said, we're going to take it out. I said, I told you it wasn't staying in there. And not accepting that in there. Him not keeping it in there. It's not going to stay in there. So they go on like that and thing. And I keep praying. His body was retaining water. So it was just getting bigger and bigger and swell up. I remember the morning, the morning I was there. And when Michael came, I said, Michael, tomorrow when you come in, stop and pick up some olive oil for me. And he said, all right. And when he took came with olive oil, I tell him I'm going to pray. And that day I put on a little fasting. And I took that bottle of olive oil. And I prayed over that bottle of olive oil. And I pray. And I tell you the night when, he, when I got here the evening. I put the back. I threw it in my hand. And I rubbed my hand. And anoint his body. And I anoint his body. And I see a heat came up into my hand. The heat was so hot, it's not burning me. But I feel the heat in my hand. And so I ministered to his body. And I anoint his body. And the next year when I got here, his body draw down. And I said, thank you, Jesus. And the next night, I do it again. And when they came for him now, he could stand up. And he could go to therapy. But he couldn't move otherwise. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. I mean the second week. After the second week, about the Tuesday, the doctor came in there and the doctor said, I'm here today to see this miracle man. And I say to the doctor, what did you just say? He said, I come to look for the miracle man this year. I say, you mean my miracle son? He said, yes. He said, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Persons came in here, mom, with less than what he come in here with. And don't make it out. He said, I don't know what you are doing, but whatsoever you are doing. Keep doing it. And I say to him, it's not me. It's my father. It's my father. He is the one that is doing it. When they take Giovanni for therapy, that one morning... Giovanni walk up the things that they put him. He goes on everything and they carry him back. That was it. No more therapy. He was, he's doing the, um, the, the tablet because they said that the kidney, the liver was not healing to how the medication was going. So they were giving him the, the tablet to thin the blood but they were giving him an injection into his leg. Or he could take it in his stomach. But he was taking it in his leg. But the doctor said the injection that they were giving him, it worked upon his muscle. So it started letting him get weak again. So I remember one day I was in there sitting down. And the pharmacist came in there. And I was talking to the pharmacist. Why you have to be giving him these things? Why can't you use, do something else? And he said to me, I'm going to do a research and I'm going to come back. He went away and in the evening he came back. I said, Father, God was just working. Jesus is just on the job. He's just working. And he said to me, he can give him another tablet. But that one is very expensive. And that one... It will more be um, easy for him to maintain and to manage. Because the one that he's on, he can't have any 
form of like green vegetable or anything like that that will work with the blood. He can't have any vegetable. So they are going to, he's going to come back to me and so. He went away and he came back today. And he said, Mom, I got a sponsor for you. You say what? He say I got a sponsor that is going to give him that medication. That six hundred dollars a month, he's gonna get that free. I said, "Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father God, you are working. You are great." And then he came back and he said, "He's gonna come out of the hospital, and he's gonna do some visit." And he said to me, how oh, long now he's in here? And I said, one month. He said, what? I said, one month. He came around the, the bed where he was. And he looked at him. And he said to him, son, I don't know who or what is looking out for you. But you have a prior mother. You have a prior mother. And she's praying. Listen to her. Listen to her. That day when Giovanni right up to come out of the hospital, when he was coming out, all the nurse and the doctors were there looking at him. And they called him the miracle child. Tonight, I don't know but I am still open and I'm still praying and I'm still clinging on to the promises of God because I know one day I'm going to see Bianca Giovanni come from that pig pen, get to their senses where mercy and grace is going to receive them. But they have to come first to a state of repentance. And that's what I'm praying for every day, for them to repent. So I don't know the mother and the father that is out there today. You might be going through some things, but don't just take Jesus for granted. Seek him as your friend. Seek him as your redeemer. Seek him as your savior. Let him be your true friend and true lover. Because it's only in Jesus you can find peace of mind. You can find the assurance to know that whatever he say, he will do. He is a healer. I prove him. So when I sing the song that said, I've been through enough to know he'll be enough for me. I've been through so many things, so many things, so many things. I can't take it today, tonight, you to leave here. So many things, but there's a joy that radiates in my heart, that come out. That when you see me, you just see the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'm going to cling to that old rugged cross. Because I'm going to exchange it someday for my crown. Bless you in Jesus' name.
just stand right now and just lift our hands. Hallelujah. I've been through enough to know that she, hallelujah, will be enough for me. Thank you, Lord. And as I sat there and I listened to Sister Paula, so many things were said, but she started out by making a reference to her personal life when she somehow thought she was playing church and needed to make that decision to be recommitted and just follow the Lord as he would have her to be led. Amen. And then when we testify, persons are encouraged because when she was faced with the situation, she could refer to the testimony of Sister Jackie when she needed blood and there was none but the Lord she called upon to infuse her. So having heard that, she was able to pray that prayer and the Lord was able to minister to her. And tonight we serve an awesome God. And the Lord that we serve is just mighty. He's unfathomable. We can't compare him. He just surprises us every single day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Not just that he was able to work in such a miraculous way that persons who are fascinated by science recognize that there had to be a greater power at work. That's the God we serve. He just steps in that he gets the glory. Hallelujah. He will always get the, get the glory. The glory belongs to Jesus. And tonight, I just want to encourage all of us in this building, persons who may still be viewing via live stream, it doesn't matter what your situation is. I'm going to invite you to just find a place of prayer. Persons who are here, just come to the altar, link together. Whatever your category is, if it is that you need to recommit your life to the Lord, if there's a situation you're faced with that seems impossible, recognize that the Lord is able to step in and work miraculously. So I'm inviting us to just come to the altar as we link together and pray. I've been through enough to know He'll be enough for me. Doubt.
talking to the Lord for the next few minutes. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. And as we prepare to go tonight, let us just pray for the Lord's protection and covering. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in your house. Lord, we recognize that, God Almighty, you are our source. And we pray this evening, Lord Jesus, that as we are about to leave this place of worship, to our different homes, I ask God that you will grant us your journey in mercy. I pray, Lord God, that you will minister to each of us tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, you know, God Almighty, the very hair on our head, God, is numbered. So, Lord Jesus, I pray tonight that as you will look at us collectively and as individuals, that you will minister to us, Lord Jesus. At the place where we need you most, there may be a mother who is hurting for a child who has walked away from your presence. But I pray tonight she would have been encouraged. Hallelujah. That prayers that she would have prayed already or pre-adventure, there was none that she could start tonight by petitioning you. That Father, Lord Jesus, that relative. I ask you, O oh God, that you will, Lord Jesus, help us, God, to hold on to your unchanging hands. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that as we look to another week, Lord, we have the fast that is coming up regarding the national conference. I pray that you will help each of us, God, to participate the way you would have us to participate, Lord Jesus. Not just that, God, I ask you to provide what needs to be provided, God Almighty. I pray that you touch our physical bodies, pray adventure, there's any ailment, Lord God. I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you will just be with us. Help us to be conscious of the fact, God, that you could put in your appearance right at this very moment. Let us not take it for granted, God, that you could come right now. I pray that you will help us to be prepared and ready, Lord Jesus, that if you should come, we would be ready. Or if you decide, Lord God, to call us home, that, Lord Jesus, our hearts would have been right with you. I pray, Lord God, that you will remind us during the course of this week that you are Jesus and you are able to deliver us irregardless of what this, the circumstances may be, Lord Jesus. Cover us under your blood, God, as we go. We thank you tonight for being with us. We pray, Lord God, that you will just have your divine will and purpose in our lives. Let us be a blessing to someone, Lord God. Let our lives be a witness, Lord God Almighty. I pray, God, that you will help us to recognize the opportunities that will present themselves, God Almighty, for us to direct somebody to you. We give you the honor, God. We give you the glory. We give you the praise, and we claim it done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us just lift our hands unto the King of Kings. Hallelujah and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us just thank him for his goodness and for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. We honor you tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless you richly. If there's anyone who needs the Holy Ghost, we will still pray with you. If you need to be baptized, you may speak with one of our ministers. Just have a wonderful week in the Lord. The Lord bless you richly. You are dismissed.